Oh, Chris, you're here. I didn't realize. It was a mistake putting permanent mark on my face, and it was a mistake watching No Time to Die. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Take Two. I got a drink. At the announcement speech, he's like going down the, the River Thames, right? Like with the boat and like the, and like he's wearing a life jacket and they're mocking him for the fact that Bond's wearing a life jacket. He knew that like the script was good with Casino Royale. He's like, let's just make this movie and people will like change their minds. Yeah. And then uh, and then it, that's exactly what happened, right? Because the movie, like everyone like loved the movie. It was like a huge reception. And then uh, Quantum of Solace comes around. And immediately, <laughs> people and, change their mind and again. And we tried to get this movie in. We tried to get the script in before there was like a writer's strike right around that time. We were trying to get the script in. And basically the writer handed in the script and he picked up his paycheck and then he picked up his sign to pick it like and then walked out the door, right? Like they couldn't get a rewrite once they got the hand of the yeah. script in, right? So they basically had like a, a broken script to be start filming and they started filming. And because they had, apparently had a, an actor strike coming up after that. So they just they wanted to get the movie in before like Daniel Craig would be available. So yeah. they they shoot the movie and like so Daniel Craig. Craig was like talking about how like uh you know he he knew that like the script wasn't there like as opposed to like casino royale so like he tried to throw all his all into like the action right and so again quantum of solace is when he started really doing the stunts in the in the series and he that's ended up he ended up like screwing up his shoulder during that airplane sequence and like the end of the, the second act of that film the opening 30 minutes kick ass the rest of it does not and it's unfortunate <laughs> So then Skyfall comes out and like basically Craig talks Sam Mendes in because they know each other. So he talks Mendes into like directing the Bond movie, right? And obviously Mendes being British, he, he had some interest in it. Like he wanted to do like a James Bond film, right? So he signs up and they know that this is the movie where they're going to bring like what they call the Bond family back into it in terms of like Hugh and like Money Penny, Money Penny and things like that. I think that's why uh, Casino Royale and Skyfall are the only two like Daniel Craig films that really stand out. Every, everything else is like tied into other shit. Those two films standalone as being just chapters in the James Bond saga. You don't have to watch other tie-in films. Right. Because like Skyfall was such a success. Right. Mendes did not want to do Spectre at the point where like they were going to do it. And again, they had to like really talk him into like coming back uh, to so direct. Why do you think that is? Why do you think someone would not want to make a bunch of money? <laughs> <laughs> Because he, he, they said, because he knew that like Skyfall was such a success that he wasn't going to be able to replicate that again. Because like those don't happen. That's often. suspicious. You know ahead of time that you're going to be making the best Bond movie of all time. No, you take no. A chance. But when it happens and you and you release the movie and you're sitting there and you're like, so I can just retire right now, the best Bond film director of all time, or I can risk it again. Anyway, they talk Sam Mendes in it. They he comes back on, and then and then Daniel Craig breaks his leg like really early on in filming. But he shot that one that one track shot for like five, five minutes of him walking through the uh, the hotel up to the city yeah. on top of things. He did that with a broken leg the entire yeah. time, and his he's doing that. And like, there's like little like ledges, right? He's got to jump down each time. And he was saying each time he jumped him, he was just praying that his leg wasn't going to give away. You know what they should have done in that scene? He should have been in a wheelchair, right? With like a, with a cast. Yeah, like probably an actual cast, but it just turns out to be like a bazooka or something like that, right? <laughs> Morning, Q. Sorry about the leg. Huh. Skiing. <laughs> Hunting. So apparently that entire Day of the Dead sequence was actually supposed to have a lot more action in it, but they had to rejig it so that he's just basically following a guy because he couldn't do that action at that point. Like, Does that mean like indirectly Spectre may have been a better film had he actually taken the nine months yeah, off? And, yeah, off yeah, and, yeah, off yeah, off 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 yeah, 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 yeah,
That could have been. And here's where that comes Considering back. Considering the amount of time between films, yeah. When, when No Time to Die, they start filming No Time to Die. And talk about a film with a bad production history. But uh, just getting to the point where they're actually What's shooting that? the movie. Oh, man, Danny Boyle was going to direct this at one point, And they were literally oh, uh, like a month you away. You know what? I forgot about that. He quit. That. And he, he quit did. like a yeah. month before they shot, before they started shooting. Crazy. Now, why was that uh, departure? Cre- they just said creative differences. Like oh, he just yeah. like They say that everything. Yeah. He just left like literally two or three months before like production was about to start shooting they had one month to find a director otherwise they were going to have to postpone the movie because of like turnaround or whatever they hired Kerry Fuqua and he comes in and is it Fuqua Fujama Fujama no, it's it's Kerry Fuji are you Fuji Fujiyama yes I am who are you I'm a cop it's yeah, not a great Hollywood name okay I'm- he was apparently in uh, in consideration for Spectre before Sam Mendes did agree to come back and do uh, Spectre. But Fukunaga. He... Kerry Joji Fukunaga. Yeah. Fukunaga? Yeah. Are you Fuji... Fujiyama? Yes, I am! Anyway, he comes in, so they start shooting production, and this time Daniel Craig breaks his foot. Like, he breaks his ankle. And they do have surgery. He does decide to have surgery. So that postpones it a little bit. Not, like, a lot, because I guess it's not, like, nearly as much of a surgery as he was going to have for his leg. So then the movie, like, you know, it's a huge action movie, so it takes forever to shoot. And then COVID happens and all that stuff. So, like, this movie just took fucking forever. I like this movie. That's as far as I will say, though. (laughs) The most annoying part about this film is for what they do with a lot of characters and people at the end of the film it's such a frustratingly mediocre bond movie overall feels like a cheat because it's such a mediocre film but now you have to watch it because it's the only film where you see james bond's death james bond dies in no time to die it's like we they needed a twist and they came up with some kind of twist i'm sure that's not the reason that they did it but it's think it's that mediocre now, the nadir of daniel craig's bond era is quantum solace but that is nowhere near as bad as the worst james bond movie for any other bond actor yay or nay did the uh, the part where bond dies remind you of armageddon with bruce willis <laughs> no. <laughs> no, i didn't think about that but now i'm probably going to next time i watch i want you to be happy whatever you do hey and if you have a child that you're pregnant with that's okay. I beautiful. You should yeah. see it. one thing the other bond movies always lacked was character development like there's no fucking other than james bond who let's also be honest never changed his character he's always the same character and he's and, interesting and, and we and love why him. is it that it's the most successful franchise movie? yeah should there be character development? And why are all these daniel craig continue? movies more successful than the next and they're each the more successful james bond movie because the time. population of the earth becomes more and more great <laughs> this is such like a, i've seen this villain of satan before in lots of other james bond films especially in the daniel craig era yeah i've seen this kind of plot line before in a lot of james bond films it's a very like run of the mill Bond film until they kill off a bunch of people that have been in the Bond franchise right. forever. Safer? Saffron's, I think it's like Saffron, Saffron is like Saffron. his tracker. He's the most successful Bond villain of all time. Like technically. Oh, for sure. Of course. But he's he such a, until the next one, he's the most typical of them. Up until that well, point. That person won't kill James Bond, I bet. Yeah. 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 Well, he kills Bond and no, he doesn't and kill Spectre. And okay, he also, I guess um, technically well, the MI6 kills James Bond, I guess. And that's oh, like a little nice twist. It's so tragic. Ooh. I don't necessarily like No Time to Die. It doesn't age well. What do you having seen the, the camp version? Having, having seen, seen the camp version. Seen it, having seen the camp version and having sat through the theater version, wasted off of his ass drunk. It's a he fine film. You, it's entertaining. It, it was actually on par with Spectre. It's not 
as great as Skyfall or Casino Royale, but those are high watermarks for. Chris, think- what was your favorite line from the end of that film again? It could be uh the, you told me right before we went into the movie that has the funniest line of any James Bond film ever. Oh yeah, do you remember what that what that line was? Yeah, I remember, but I'm asking you, what was it? What's the what's the uh, device that he has that blows up the guy's eye? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about the watch thing. Yeah, yeah he's it's like, it's like, like well, Bond, what's the matter? It's like, oh, I showed him my watch. It really blew his mind. <laughs> <laughs> it probably it definitely probably is the best Daniel Craig one liner. Like it's yeah. definitely yeah. And you know what? Let's not forget that's a big part of the James Bond films. All those feathers and he still can't fly. I think they were on their way to a funeral. Hang on, James. The thought had occurred to me. Dirty Tarantino's toast time Ooh, for no time. My to favorite. Die. Tyler, let's start with you. How many dirty Tarantino toasts do you give No Time to Die? James Bond swan song for Daniel Craig. Since I can't give it half toes, I will be kind and round up to a seven. All right. Jesus, you're nice. I, I too, will give this film seven dirty Tarantino toasts. You know, there are some people that watch the IMAX version. I watch the cam version. So there are certain advantages because not only do you get the English translation, you get the Filipino translation. <laughs> I will give it... Four. Hey, that's pretty good.